Hi, I'm John Mullen. I'm a Senior Account Manager with Greif. And my name is Doug Courtney. I'm Sales Manager of Construction Products for Greif. John, where are we at and what are we doing? We are here at the World of Concrete in Las Vegas trade show. And today we're going to share some of our product information and some of our newest products that we've launched this year. Great, guys, if you want to join us for a few moments, we'll introduce you to our products. First of all, I'd like to start off with who is Greif. Greif is a 140-year-old company that is publicly traded on the New York Stock Exchange. We have 15 manufacturing locations spread throughout the U.S. and Canada. Greif's entrance into the world of concrete is one through acquisition. The acquisition progress begins like this. In 2007, Caristar Industry acquired Mayer's Paper Tube in Winnipeg. In 2009, Caristar Industries acquired Smurfit Stone and Tube Corporation. In 2015, Caristar Industries acquired the Newark Group. In 2019, Greif acquired Caristar Industries. So as you can see, many of our partners have been doing business with us for 10, 20, 30 years in the past. So the Greif name may be new to the concrete industry, but our forming tubes and sales team should be very familiar to all. We're here today to take an opportunity to introduce you to our group of products. On my left here is one of our most common and versatile construction tubes that we sell to our customer base. It is a Greif Easy Pour Weather Shield tube. The Weather Shield technology is something that we incorporate in all the production of our tubes. It provides excellent weather exposure, does have some weather properties to it. It has resistant properties, but is not weatherproof. It is manufactured from six inch up to 60 inch and has capability of exceeding 30 to 36 feet in length. Our newest product that we launched this year is the Easy Pour Pro Plus construction tube. Pro Plus tube has an enhanced outer ply, which can withstand 72 hours of continuous rain and exposure to the elements. The Pro Plus, with its enhanced outer ply, allows us to manufacture the same tube in a standard wall, making it very easy to work with and to move out in the field as opposed to a heavy wall constructed tube. This is our polygloss concrete form. What makes the polygloss concrete form unique is the inside liner. It is a polystyrene liner, and the end effect of the liner means it's a smooth surface column that is left. In comparison to a Easy Pour Pro Plus or Easy Pour Tube, you will see a spiral line that is left on the concrete column once the form is removed. And what takes place is the polystyrene liner is wrapped inside the tube and this polystyrene liner butts up against each other. So it depends on the size of the column, you will have between one, two vertical seams on the column. These seams are very small and easily removed oftentimes with a rubbing stone. Another unique feature to our polygloss form is our rip cord. So the rip cord is used once the concrete is poured into the column. When it's time to strip the column, you simply wrap the twine around a hammer and pull down. The results are uh, unzipping of the form that easily releases from the column. The polygloss form can be manufactured in various lengths. We could be as short as two feet and as long as 30 feet. This is our professional seamless construction tube. What makes the professional seamless tube unique in comparison to the polygloss tube is the professional seamless tube has a urethane based coating in it. Remember the polygloss has a polystyrene liner and it may leave one or two vertical seams on the finished column. Professional Seamless leaves a true Class A finish. And what we mean by this Class A finish is that it's in an area that is exposed to a lot of traffic on a building. 
So the contractor expects that column to look as smooth and as pretty as possible. Our professional seamless tube can be manufactured in one continuous length up to 24 feet. The IDs that are manufactured for our professional seamless range from 12 inch up to 48 inch. All of our construction products contain the Weather Shield technology. This provides added moisture protection to our product. What we want to make clear is that it does not mean our products are waterproof. When storing our products in your warehouse, we recommend they be stored upright and maintained in a dry area. But we understand that that's not always available on a job site. So in situations where an upright storage position is not available, we recommend that they be stored on a flat, level surface, a minimum of four inches off the ground. Typical what we see is contractors using four by fours. So a four by four, when you lay the tube down on a flat, level surface, will keep the tube off the ground and protect it from the elements. Also, when stored on a job site, we recommend when rain is expected to keep the tubes protected from steady rainfall while they're stored on their side. So what we recommend is that you use Bisqueen or waterproof tarp, completely cover the tubes to protect them from the elements and keep them dry. Yeah, one of the frequently asked questions is, is how do we brace our forms? And John, what's the first step in bracing our form? In order to execute a successful pour, we want to make sure that when we have our tube in place and properly braced, that it is plumb. Now, the first step in securing the tube after it's plumb is a collar is usually applied to the top of the form. And what John and I will do is show what a typical 2x4 collar is, what it looks like, and how it's used. So the first step would be applying this 2x4 collar, securing it to the top of the form. When the form is poured on a slab, oftentimes, and most times actually, you'll see it at the base of the column as well. And when it's on a slab, what most contractors end up doing is nailing this into the concrete slab to secure it. So once the collars are in place, the next step is to brace them. And typically what we see on job sites are two by fours or some type of metal brace that is, you want to lift this up, secured to the top of the collar and separated at 90 degrees. So on a typical column, you will see a minimum of four braces applied to the form. Now when forms exceed 12 feet in length, what you'll often see contractors do is also put a collar in the middle of it. Why are they doing this? One of the main reasons for securing the tube in the center with a brace is on extended length tubes, we want to make sure that the tube stays in place and remains plumb during pour. Yeah, that's a good point, John. And also, this middle collar needs to be braced just like the top collar. So what you'll use is either wood 2x4 braces or metal braces. And again, those braces will be separated at 90 degrees. The bracing procedures that we discussed, whether being at the bottom, the middle, or the top of the form, is applied to all our construction tube products to execute a successful pour in the field. After bracing, Again, the tube is plumb, it's properly secured, and it's ready for pour. If the pour is not gonna take place immediately, what we recommend and what we see as a standard operating procedure on all jobs is to cover the top of the tube with a layer of plastic. And as you can see, simply slide it over the top, and what contractors end up doing is taping it, which secures that, prevents it from blowing off during heavy winds, and it keeps the rain out while it's waiting to be poured. And even though with our products, with our Weather Shield technology, and in this case with our Easy Pour Pro Plus Enhanced Outer Ply, which can take up to 72 hours of inclement weather and exposure to the elements, we still have a product that has an exposed 
seam on the bottom and the top, which is the reason we want to make sure that we cover that up. Even though the outside of the tube can take some exposure, we want to make sure we keep this dry and intact. Now that the form is properly braced and it's ready for pour, John, what's the next step? With our Easy Pour and our Easy Pour Pro Plus, we are able to handle a, up to a 12 foot full continuous pour on our Easy Pour and a up to 28 foot on our Pro Plus in a continuous flow. Now, for better results, a shorter lift of pours will provide a better pour and it will allow us to vibrate as we pour into the tube and shorter pours as we complete a full liquid head. Yeah, so basically what John's saying is, Mr. Customer, yes, you can pour this in one continuous pour with no lift rates, right? But what, what's gonna be the problem if you do that? Well, the problem is, is you're not gonna vibrate it properly. And what that creates is the, what is referred to as wormholes or bug holes. They're air pockets that are gonna be revealed on the surface of the column which is really ugly, which is gonna take a lot of labor, which is gonna take a lot of sacking, a lot of patching, right? We wanna avoid that. So what John is saying is, yes, it's designed to withstand the full liquid head pressure of a single pour, but when you do it in multiple lifts and vibrate it properly, the finished results are gonna be a lot better for the contractor. We were properly braced, we were plumb, we executed a successful pour with proper vibration, and the last step now is to remove the form. Yeah, so in other words, how do you strip the column, right? So for both of our products, the Easy Pour Weather Seal and our Easy Pour Pro Plus with Weather Seal technology, the simple way to remove these is with a skill saw or a sawzall. What we see contractors always doing is using the skill saw mainly, making a vertical slit down the column, and then simply with that slit, It'll, it'll release, the column will release and pop off. So. Doug, is there a limit of time that the form has to be removed? Yeah, so that's a good question, John. So what we recommend is once the concrete sets, remove the form as quickly as possible. Typically, depending on weather, we see concrete setting within a 24, 36 hour period, right? So minimum, 24 hours curing time, setting time for removal, maximum five days. What a lot of people on job sites do is say, well, wait a minute, I wanna keep my column protected, right? So what happens if it's up for high exposure and I'm worried about people running into it? You know, maybe somebody has uh, carrying bricks or blocks or whatever, and they may damage the column. So what we do, what we recommend them do is after they put that slit and remove it, simply put it on again. And you'll use it as a protective sleeve for the remainder of the job until you want it to be removed. We hope that the information that we shared with you today about our products and how they should be properly used in the field will be helpful and beneficial. And let's please remember, when we're on the job site, let's operate and let's do it safely. Absolutely. Safety first, guys. Gals. Hey, thanks again. And if John and I spoke too fast during this video, what we have here is our product brochure that covers all of our concrete products that John and I just talked about. And it may have an additional one in there, which is a side benefit for you guys, extra feature. So if you don't have this, please make sure you reach out to your local account manager. We'll get this in your hands. Best of luck to you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.